folks, today's video is going to be another edition of your makeup archives and uh, today we're digging into the year 2014, which was um, a big year for makeup. This was one of those big years, okay? <laughs> And before we go any further, I would like to say that this video is sponsored. We got a sponsor today, y'all. Uh, this video is sponsored by HelloFresh. So let's roll to the ad read. Today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit and it makes cooking at home fun, easy, and affordable. I've been using HelloFresh for a little while now and Josh and I have really enjoyed the meals we've tried. We've gotten so used to doing the same recipes on a rotation each week, dinner was starting to get a little boring. So breaking out of our recipe rut has been really fun. We try new proteins that we wouldn't normally buy and the produce gets to our door faster than from a grocery store. So it's getting to our house at peak freshness and flavor. I'm a big fan of quick breakfast on the go to work and HelloFresh has quick breakfast and lunch options for when you're in a rush. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit. This one I'm cooking up now was definitely a favorite in our last box. You can never go wrong with buttery noodles. One of my favorite things about HelloFresh is the sustainability aspect. There's no food waste. Josh and I always end up making way too much food for both of us normally, so there's always weird leftovers. HelloFresh cuts all that out, so you know you're getting the right portions without any wasted food. Plus, HelloFresh's carbon footprint is 25% lower than that of meals from store-bought groceries. You end up saving up to 28% on groceries by using HelloFresh instead of regular in-store shopping. And honestly, right now, that isn't my favorite thing to do. So getting food delivered and onto the table in just about 30 minutes is so satisfying. So if you would like to try HelloFresh, make sure to use code ABBYW12 to get up to 12 free meals across your first four HelloFresh boxes, including free shipping on your first box at HelloFresh.com. That is code ABBYW12 at HelloFresh.com. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video and let's get right back into it. If you haven't seen one of my makeup archives videos before, uh, I've been digging into the last several years, basically starting with the year I started making YouTube videos, which was around 2010. And so we are talking about 2014 today, um, but I am leaving out many holiday things because I made an entire like holiday related makeup archives during Vlogmas back in December as a collab with Smoky Glow. So if you wanna check that video out, I will have a link in a card as well as Hannah's video. Cause I dug into like just holiday releases from like 2010 to 2014. She did 2015 to like more current. Anyway, most of what I end up using comes from Temptalia as far as just like looking at the archive itself um, because it's truly one of the best pieces of like makeup archives on the internet. I end up looking a lot at Musings of a Muse, Carla Sugar, Fira.net, oh shoot, who else? Makeup and Beauty blog, um, a handful of other blogs that I've looked at. I'll link them below because if anything, it's just really fun to look back into the archives and just like see the way styles have changed. And that's kind of been my favorite part about this, looking at the way that makeup styles has changed, looking at the way that brands have evolved. That's one of the most fascinating things. So let's get started with at least one brand that um, launched in 2014. Charlotte Tilbury. I remember when Charlotte Tilbury first launched, it was, she was very fancy. The blind was very fancy. It was very British. I was like, who is this, who is this fancy British lady? Like, I remember Charlotte Tilbury was, worked a lot with celebrities, worked a lot with um, like British entertainers. And I just remember being like very intrigued by the brand. I never ended up buying like anything from them. <laughs> but the fact that Charlotte Tilbury is only like a seven year old brand is pretty fascinating. Like knowing that they've only been around for this long. So that's a nice, cool little tidbit that I found out. And I was like, oh, like Charlotte Tilbury, like straight up just launched in 2014. The Bite Beauty Lip Crayons, the matte lip crayons launched in 2014. And I could have sworn that it was later. <laughs> I could have sworn that it was later because I remember really getting into them right around when like the Kylie lip thing got popular. And I believe that was like 2016, 2017. The Bite Lip Crayons launched in 2014 and I have one of them. I have the shade Glossé, which is like a kind of like brownie, pinky, mauve thing. It's one of my favorite lipstick formulas. I still love that formula. It's so comfortable. It's so long wearing and so flattering. Oh my God. God, it's like literally, could I say my favorite lipstick? I don't know. But I will say that the Bite Lip Crayons are a better formula than the Amuse Bouche. Unpopular opinion? I don't know. I think the Amuse Bouche formula 
is way too emollient and it smudges like crazy. The matte lip crayons, ooh, so good, so good. Oh my gosh. One blush that I had a very, very long time, and I believe this one came out with a couple of different matte collections, Azalea Blossom. I low-key feel like helped inspire this hair. I mean, right now it's very faded. There's like the tiniest piece of purple still holding on, but um, I am gonna be refreshing them in less than two weeks and I'm very excited about it. But uh, MAC Azalea Blossom was a blush that was a two-tone blush, but it was a gradient from pink to purple. And I kept that thing for so long. I think I only decluttered it like 2019. So I at least had that blush for five years and uh, it was interesting seeing when it was launched and I was like, oh, I guess I've had it for that long. Yeah. I don't think I've actually ever finished a MAC blush. I've had several, but I've never finished them. I think the one I will finally finish is Blush Baby and I've had that one for far too long. But Azalea Blossom was very good. I really liked Azalea Blossom. I love the idea of just like a gradient two-tone blush. Is that just me? Like a gradient two-tone blush. Like I don't like ones where it's like multiple beside, like more than two, but two, I'm into it. Okay, the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfectors. The Becca Highlighters hit in 2014. This was pre-Champagne Pop. This was pre it blowing up. I remember Becca originally from watching Pixie Woo videos, like Sam and Nick would use Becca products. So I believe Becca started in the UK. I remember when they first like started getting popular here in the US, I was like, these are pretty, these are beautiful. I had a liquid one that I used for a long time that I would mix with my moisturizer sometimes and then use it as like a glowy primer. Good, very good. It was a precursor to all these like glowy primer things, like precursor to the Charlotte Tilbury thing and the glow lust, like precursor to all that. It's been a roller coaster, so. Low-key sad about that. The Shimmering Skin Perfectors really hit it in 2014. And I think there were only like four shades back in the day, like Opal, Moonstone, Pearl. Oh, shoot, there was like maybe five, maybe five total. That was 2014, that was 2014. Next, let's get into some MAC collections. MAC, MAC was in their lane back in 2014. MAC did a second collection with Rihanna, MAC Viva Glam Rihanna 2. And this, I don't know why I didn't buy it, probably because it was like a luster formula. Or was it a glaze or a luster? It was like kind of sheerish, but it was a really cool, almost taupey brown, but it wasn't full coverage. So it was more of a tint to your lips. Like it definitely like showed up brown, but it wasn't like a full coverage kind of lipstick. This was kind of a fun color. Like I think this is when brown lipsticks were really kind of like getting trendy and popular. They're not as much anymore. People are more into like kind of glossy lips or like pinks. Brown lipsticks, I wore brown lipsticks so much back then. <laughs> Oh my God. I straight up, I think I still have like a lipstick from MAC that's called Stone. That's just flat out like concrete color. Don't wear it much anymore. But the Viva Glam Rihanna too, that one was good. That one was definitely like a good lipstick. I liked it. I didn't buy it, but I liked it. And also MAC did, uh, I don't remember if Maleficent was part of their Venomous Villains. I don't believe it was because I think it came out around the Maleficent film, the one with Angelina Jolie. I remember when I first saw this, I was like, wait, how do you say that name? Like, cause I never, we never really were into Sleeping Beauty growing up because she was sleeping through the entire thing. So I didn't really know anything about Maleficent and I was like, Maleficent? M Maleficent, how do you say the name? But this was a better take on a, a Mac Disney collab than what they recently did. It was simple, but it they weren't trying too hard. It was like, they, they were trying just hard enough. There's that fine line between trying too hard, which is like the Cruella thing and not trying hard enough, which is the Sims collection. This was like right in the middle. And I feel like they need to just go back to doing that. They haven't hit that sweet spot in a long time. <laughs> and then they also did a uh, their iconic Lord collab. They did a lipstick with Lord back when Lord was like first 
popping off. Um, this was the Pure Heroin lipstick and it was a really rich purple shade that was a little bit more bluey tone than Rebel and a little bit pinkier tone from Cyber and a little bit lighter. So it was like a just straight up purple lipstick. I never owned this, but I remember really, really wanting it. I really got into Lord when she first was like coming out with music. I was like, oh my God, how is this child so talented? Like <laughs> I felt so inadequate. I'm like, wait a minute. She's how old and I'm how old? Oh no, what have I accomplished? This is a really good lipstick and uh, I loved it. Like purple lipstick, again, it's not super in anymore, but I don't know, who knows? Maybe I'll like start rocking purple lipstick again when I get my hair brightened again. Cause I have some, I think still. I know I have Rebel still and that's more of like a fuchsia, magenta. More of those one-offs, Mac. More of those just like little one-off things. Speaking of, they did a little trio of lipsticks with the Nasty Gal. Um, back when everybody was obsessed with Nasty Gal. What, didn't they go bankrupt a few years back? Like is Nasty Gal even a thing much anymore? I just remember everybody was obsessed with them back in the like the girl boss era <laughs> before girl boss was used as like a cringy comeback. It was just a trio of lipsticks, like a pink, a red and a purple, like. Okay, like. <laughs> I didn't necessarily see how it was like Nasty Gal themed, but it was a collab with Nasty Gal. So I don't know what they're up to these days. Oh, this was their year that they did the Rocky Horror one. <gasps> Mac and Rocky Horror. I forgot to find that screenshot. Oh, Mac and Rocky Horror. What a time. There were glitters, glitter pigments, lipsticks. It doesn't take a whole lot to make a Rocky Horror picture show collection look cool because like the design and the logo of the film itself is just cool looking. The lipstick, I mean, they're all red tones, obviously, like different tones of red. One's like a dark, one's more of like a maroon, and then one's like a hot, true red, and there's like a bluier red. So it's all reds. But then they had a, a six pan eyeshadow palette, which was all very like cool, blue, purple, gray colors that Dr. Frankenfurter would wear. Again, doing just the right amount. Not too much, not too little. Just right, Goldilocks. Oh, and their nail polishes too. Ooh, the nail polish looks great. But it was like a full collection. They had the grease paints. Remember the grease paints? Like the, the eyeliner, the, like it didn't stay on very, like it creased like crazy. Grease paint more like crease paint. <laughs> but yeah, this was, this was definitely a, a collection that worked. Is that it for Mac? That's it for Mac. That's it for Mac. Okay, let's go into Urban Decay. Urban Decay launched the electric palette in 2014. And I bought it um, and I had it for a long time. I decluttered it, I think again, back in 2019. At the time it was, I don't wanna say like the first of its kind cause it wasn't, but it was definitely like, it made a scene. The only people who were really into the electric palette were people who were like doing full on bright looks or people who were just kind of wanting to. So it was, it, it, at that time, it was really like the basic kind of neutral makeup or full on neon ass makeup. Like you didn't really have a lot of in between, at least on YouTube, you, you had the neutral folks and then you had the super hot, bright <laughs> folks. And the electric palette was, definitely cater to those folks. And it was a good palette for the time. Like it, it was still a good palette. By the time I decluttered it, it had lost a bit of its quality because it was more of like a pure pigment palette. So those tend to kind of degrade in quality longer because there isn't as much filler in it. So the like blendability was lacking towards the end of its life. But um, I do remember that the brush that came with it was the best brush that ever came with a uh, Urban Decay palette. Like any of the brushes that came with the Naked palettes could not compare. That brush, great brush that came with an Urban Decay palette. I still wish I had it. Electric palette, oh how we miss you. Ooh, and then Urban Decay did a Pulp Fiction collection. Again, just enough Goldilocks, like just right. It was a small collection, a little quad that had like a cool design that fit the aesthetic, but it wasn't doing too much. It wasn't a whole diorama. Well, honestly, a diorama for Pulp Fiction really wouldn't have made sense. It was like, what, gonna be like a Royale with cheese? <laughs> like just a cheeseburger palette? Um, no, but it was a great collection. There was a nail lacquer, a, a glitter liner, a lipstick, and then a lip liner and the little quad. It was just well 
well done. It totally matched the aesthetic and proves that Urban Decay used to be that. Not so much anymore, but they used to do that. They used to make just like concise and well thought out and cool collabs and cool collections that weren't doing too much, but also weren't just like super lackluster, you know? I would have bought this. Like I would buy this now. Like <laughs> I would totally buy this now. Okay, Kat Von D. KVD vegan, be I don't, uh, vegan beauty. I, uh, yeah. I don't know what the name is anymore, but I know there's a K and a V and a D and vegan, okay? When they were still Kat Von D beauty, Kat Von D cosmetics, they had two different palettes that came out that year, at least that I could find. The star studded eyeshadow book, which was definitely like a precursor to the stained glass collection. It was a little bit all over the place as far as just like color story. It was a little messy and not nearly as pretty, but I kind of liked the outer packaging. It was literally just like a studded star. So it was like right on the nose when it came to the title. I don't know, like I like the packaging. I like the design of that, just like a star on the outs. Like you don't have to do so much if it's like a simple and well done packaging. It was way too big for my liking back then and also way too big for my liking now. So it definitely would have had to been like a more concise color story. And something about, this is a pet peeve of mine, something about long and skinny rectangle shaped eyeshadow pans when they're not laid out like vertically in a line, a la like the Melt palettes or the new Kaleidos palettes. When they're just in like a big rectangle or a square, but it's just all these small, like thin rectangles. It just, it doesn't look that nice. And it, it it's more confusing to the eye. You can't see the colors as well. You can't see how they connect to each other as well. Um, but that's just like a small thing. But the packaging was pretty. The colors were all over the place and there were too many of them. But. A palette that did, that was before its time, truly. I don't know if I would buy it now, but I'd be more likely to buy it than that other one. The Chrysalis palette. Part of me remembers my sister getting this, but I think it was the Monarch palette that Libby bought. And I don't remember what year the Monarch palette came out, but I loved that she was doing like butterfly themed things back in the day. I want that to come back. Can we have butterflies be the new thing, please? Butterflies? Yes? No? The Chrysalis palette was this beautiful, uh, kind of purpley, colorful, but more like muted colorful palette that was laid out identically to the Shade and Light palette where there was like the horizontal eyeshadows and then the three vertical ones underneath it. I feel like that's a really good way of laying out a palette that's not the same as everybody else's. It's still interesting to look at and still kind of broken up into sections without it being like, these are four separate eyeshadow palettes, you know? Looking at the Chrysalis palette now, I'm like, oh, that's pretty. Like, I would buy that. I would buy that. Could they Could they go back to that? Can they like revamp those, please? Thank you. Uh, they probably couldn't because it probably still, Kat probably still has rights to it and we don't care what she thinks anymore. We don't care what she does. Hmm. Yeah, that was, that was a good palette. I would have bought it. But one thing I did buy, and I regret <laughs> buying, uh, that they came out with in 2014, I didn't buy this until like 2017, I think, um, was the Studded Kiss lipsticks. I bought two of them when they reformulated them to make the formula better. I bought them when they were going on sale to like get the old stock out. And I should have realized why they were discontinuing that formula because it was absolutely terrible. Worst formula for a lipstick I've ever tried, hands down. Studded Kiss lipsticks were horrible. They were so bad. They like were patchy. They didn't go on evenly. That's the same thing, Abby. They weren't very pigmented. They bled into the lip lines. They weren't comfortable. They were gritty. Ooh, the only thing that they had going for them was that it was cool colors and the packaging looked cool. But the formula was horrific. Like it was a terrible lipstick formula. And if I ever said that I loved them in a video, I was lying to myself, trying to justify it to myself because in hindsight, the lipstick formula was terrible. I gave it to Libby and she was fine and she like mixed it with other things, but it was so bad. It was, oh my, it was so bad. Like, ugh. <laughs> I never tried it after they reformulated it. So I don't know if the formula was better after that, but if you tried the formula prior to the reformulation, you know what I'm talking about, cause it's bad. All right, we're, we're in the home stretch and it is raining and dripping like crazy outside. China glaze. <laughs> 
China glaze nail polish. This was a, a trend and a product that I literally never knew existed until I was going through the archives and I was like, did I ever know that this existed? And if I did, did I block it out of my brain? Did I try and forget it? Because if I did, I succeeded. But this was a crinkled chrome um, collection that somehow, I don't know what kind of science was involved in this and why they thought it was a good idea. This feels like a science experiment gone wrong. It wasn't crackle, it was crinkle. And it somehow looked like you put thin aluminum foil on your nails. But why though? <laughs> why? Why was this a thing? Why did anybody think, yeah, aluminum foil on your nails? What? I don't want texture on my nails. I want color and like variation of color and maybe like glitter. Like glitter is the extent at which I want texture on my nails and that is it. That is it. I don't want crinkled chrome. I looked this up and I was like, wait, did anybody actually wear this? If you wore this, did it look better in real life than it did in photos? Cause in photos it looked gross. And if you didn't know that this existed, I'm sorry. <laughs> this was something that I owned and I lost like an idiot. I don't know why, I don't know where it went, but this was also at a time when I had, I wasn't even like newly single at the time cause I had been single for like over a year at this point. So it wasn't like I was just doing retail therapy because I'm like, I'm a single lady and I have more money to spend because I'm not driving up to the friggin' city to see my boyfriend because he was too lazy to drive. Another day. Uh, but I still have one of my Chanel lipsticks that I bought from that era when I was like going to Nordstrom all the time. I went to Nordstrom all the time because I lived in Gig Harbor, which is like an hour away from here. And I would drive to Tacoma over, over the bridge. So I would drive to Tacoma once a week with my friend Sarah, who we would take photos for our fashion blog once a week, give or take. And so I'd always have a lot more time in Tacoma. So I would go to the mall all the time. I would go to the mall all the time. I would buy MAC lipsticks, MAC blushes. I had so many MAC lipsticks at one point that I have done at least I've done the back to Mac thing twice and I still have some that I'm saving to bring back to Mac. The back to Mac thing is like when you bring empty Mac containers, um, six of them, you can trade it in for a free lipstick and they recycle them. But I would go to Nordstrom all the time and there was a really nice lady that worked at the counters I would shop at. I would just browse. I would go up to Topshop and be like, can I afford this? No. And then go back to the makeup counters because I'm like, this isn't as expensive, but it still makes me feel fancy. So, I bought this lipstick from the Chanel counter. I remember I had heard a ton of girls from the small beauty community, like small YouTubers, um, which was a very different community back in the day. It was a lot more people who were into very niche luxury products. Um, a lot of British folks I watched, Chanel Boy was the lipstick. It was a sheer pink lipstick. Nothing special, literally nothing special about this lipstick. A sheer pink lipstick. It might as well have been a lip balm with like some pink sparkle in it. Honestly, not that exciting, not that different, not special enough to be worth $32 for a lipstick. And yet I bought it because I wanted to feel fancy. I wanted to have something that I could take out of my makeup bag, make, take out of my purse and apply it and then uh, put the lid back on and just have like a Chanel thing. And this was from the Rouge Coco Shine line, which I don't believe is still around because when I looked up Chanel Boy, they have Rouge Coco Flash. So I, I don't know if the if Flash is like a rebranding re of Rouge Coco Shine or if they reformulated everything, but Boy was truly just like a sheer pink lipstick that would work on pretty much anybody because the pigment was so sheer. Um, it could go over a lip liner. There would be no need for a lip gloss because it was already kind of glossy. And I literally just bought it because I wanted to feel fancy. And uh, it, was, it was something that a ton of people were talking about in the small uh, YouTube community, small beauty community. And I don't know if this was really big in like the bigger makeup community at the time, but the, uh, the lo-fi, the lo-fi beauty gurus just sitting in front of their damn computer talking about things that they like, not being over the top. It was literally just, here's stuff that I like. And uh, I, 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 I also liked it, so, you know. 
that's everything I wanted to talk about in today's makeup archives. Um, let me know if you remember any of these products or if you had any of them or if there were other things from that era that you loved because this was really an era that I that I loved in makeup YouTube because it was just when it was it was starting to grow, but it hadn't reached its like peak where everybody was starting to make makeup content. It was still kind of our own little corner of YouTube. It was definitely pre people making a lot of money on it. It had just a sense of like wholesomeness and authenticity that I sometimes miss, you know, but uh yeah, so today's song of the day, let's see, what can I talk about? What song can I talk about today? Oh, I know, um, today's song of the day is Return the Favor from We Are Scientists because I was listening to their, is it the fourth record? Yeah, fourth record, TV en Francais earlier on my way home from work and I forgot how good that record was. It's so good. It came out in 2014. What? Oh my God, I didn't even remember. Oh God, that wasn't even planned. <laughs> it also came out in 2014. Yeah, that was a good year. That was a good year. When I saw them on tour that year, I drove from Portland, Oregon to Vancouver, Canada in one day. Uh, Portland, Oregon, one night, saw them there. Uh, stayed the night, drove up to Vancouver, Canada the next day, saw them that night, stayed in Canada that night, drove back down to Seattle the next day, worked a six hour shift at Lush, and then saw them in Seattle that night and my hair was disgusting. So that was a good a good year though, good time. I remember trying to get around Canada. It was really hard because I didn't have my GPS and I was like, I don't know where I'm going. Like I had to like save a map on my phone because I was like, I couldn't use the internet because I was in international areas. I don't know, it was hilarious, but Return the Favor from We Are Scientists is your song of the day. I would say it's in like my top, top 10 favorite We Are Scientists songs. Not top five, maybe top five. I'd have to make that list one day. But anyway, um, they're like my favorite band of all time. So check that song out. Check out uh, all my social media in the description down below, my Instagram, my Twitter, and my Twitch. Thank you again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. I very much appreciate it. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate it. And if you are new here and would like to see more of my content, please subscribe. I upload two videos a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. So definitely do that. Uh, hope you're staying safe. Hope you're staying home. Hope you are taking care of yourself. Please, seriously, take care of yourself. Thanks for watching everyone. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.